We're going to be talking about local search engine optimization and what to do for that, how it's different than uh, um, than, than kind of traditional search engine optimization. Um, I hope that as we're doing this, uh, you'll take some pictures of tonight's event, uh, put them on Twitter, put them on Google+. Uh, you can use the hashtag SEO Meetup on both Google+, Plus and on Twitter. So first thing, let's set a baseline. Um, if you're searching for something on Google, and, uh, and we're using Miami salons because I've got some old historical screenshots that I'm going to compare this to. Uh, this is what you would see today if you search for Miami salons. And a lot of people don't think about all the different pieces, parts of what's going on here. There are ads on here. There are a number of different Google algorithms coming into play with this right here. And so to set that baseline, let's first talk about what has Google been looking for? What do they want to have rank well? Um, regardless of, of, of whether it's their natural result, results or their video results or their image results or their local results or anything like that. From the beginning, Google has always been looking for two key areas. They've been looking for relevancy and they've been looking for authority. That's the way it's been since, since Google got their start. Relevancy is primarily about having the right words in the right places on your website. So if somebody's looking for Miami salons, then you need to have the words Miami Salons in the right places on your website. That's, that's the relevancy side. The authority side is primarily having links from different web pages pointing to other web pages. Because Google considers the links between the links that connect pages, connect websites, as kind of votes of confidence, recommendations, votes of authorities. Um, and so this is the primary way that from the beginning Google has always looked at relevancy and authority. There's a lot of details to it, but in a nutshell, those are the two things that Google has always been looking for. So is local SEO different? Well, a little bit, and in some ways more than a little bit. Um, this is a screenshot from about six or seven years ago of a search for Miami salons. And what I want you to notice here is that the first listing here, I'm, look, I'm looking for a salon in Miami. I type in Miami salons on Google. What am I looking for? Am I looking for miami.citysearch.com? You guys know that City Search is kind of like a review place, okay? So the first listing is City Search, not a salon. It's from Google's perspective. You could call that a middleman, right? The second result, another City Search listing. The third result, Super Pages. That's you know, that's, that's these guys over here. Is that a salon? No, not yet. Number four, hey, vanmichael.com. Finally, we found a salon, if, if that's what we were looking for. And then the fifth is yelp.com, and so on, and so on, and so on. Of the top ten, when I took this screenshot, uh, there were two of the top ten listings that were actual salons in Miami. All of the others were middlemen. They were yellowbook.com and yp.com and insiderpages.com and salonseeker.com and salonstalker.com and findastylist.com. Here's the problem that, that Google and also local businesses were running into. These guys have been around for a long time, right? They used to be the only game in town. And, and they were effective back in the day. And so they could charge a lot of money for an ad, right? And so, if, any of you guys ever bought yellow page listing ads? What's a full page ad cost? A thousand bucks a month or more, depending upon you know how good a directory it is and how many people it goes. It costs a lot of money, right? And back in the day, everybody used a yellow pages. Back in my parents' time and back in Bob's day, right? <laughs> Pretty much everybody used the old pages. <laughs> this is the last time Bob's coming. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> I'll remember. I'll remember that. So, so it used to be a good value. However, we know what's happened with the internet. Nobody uses these things anymore. But there are huge organizations, companies that were built around these these directory listings, these books. And they were, in some ways, smart enough to start changing their resources, to start investing their resources into, oops, let me back up, sorry, 
into websites like superpages.com and into yellowpages.com and into yp.com and into dexnose.com. And here's the thing. They had the money, the budget, to hire a lot of smart guys like me. And do you remember that from the beginning, Google has always looked at two primary things. Relevance, which is putting the right words in the right places. I've known how to do that for a long time. And authority. And authority is about generating links. If you're a company like, uh, like AT&T or Superpages, you've got a large budget where you can focus on making sure that your relevancy is as good as possible and making sure that your authority is as good as possible. You might spend a million dollars or ten million dollars a year on trying to rank well for these different things. And if you're a small business owner and you've got a $5,000 marketing budget a year, you just can't compete. And guess what? That's why these guys were dominating and the small business owners were getting pushed out. Hey, who's got an idea? Why do these guys want to rank well for Miami salons or National Plumber or National Veterinarian or anything? Why do they want to rank well? Sell ads. To sell ads. That's right. Because when their sales rep walks into your business and says, hey, you want to buy a $1,000 listing in here, you're going to say, nobody uses that anymore. And they'll, but then they'll say, hey, but yellowpages.com, we got a million people a day coming to our website because we rank number one on Google for so many things. And so you ought to pay for a listing in here and you'll get a listing on our website. And so the reason is because they can then sell more advertising. It got so bad that essentially Google said, we got to figure something out because these guys are really manipulating our, our way of doing business. They figured out the algorithms too much They've got too much authority on their side. They've got too many resources. And so Google came up with something else. Google, uh, around 2004, Google had come out with Google Maps. And a few years later, they started doing this. And this was back, uh, this screenshot's from about 2008. Um, they started showing some of these in about 2007 when they were doing what we call universal results. But this is kind of the start of when pure local results came in. And Google, Google got around these middlemen by using a completely different database of information. They were basically looking for real live business entities. Um, if, if you have a business license and you're classified in a particular business category, that's what they wanted to have show up here on Google. And that meant that the guys at City Search couldn't show up here. Yellowpages.com could not show up here, theoretically. This was only going to be Miami salons. And so this is how this started. There were two big things that came into play here. First off, I already mentioned to you, it had a different database. It's pulling from a different place. But with the normal Google results, it's any website, right? It's any page, any document that's on the internet anywhere. That's, that's the bucket of information that normal Google results pulls from, right? And, and that's how City Search and Yellow Pages was doing so well. Well, this local search, local SEO database, it's coming from just, just businesses. You've got to have a business license. You've got to be in a particular business category. Um, and secondly, it had a completely different algorithm. There's a little bit of overlap between the normal uh, factors that, that Google was looking at and what they were looking at here, but they were dramatically different. And so it was a whole new world of search engine optimization. When this came out, I was actually uh, with a company called StyleNet.com, and we did websites and internet marketing for salons. That's all we did. Uh, grew up to about 2,000 salon customers before I left the company. But so with, with a salon or a day spa, everything was local, because they're not trying to rank well for hair, right? I mean, they're trying to rank well for hair in Nashville or hair in Miami or hair in Tullahoma, Tennessee. So everything was local. So I was immersed in this heavily for about the, the four or five years uh, while I was with StyleNet. And this is an important thing to remember in the back of your head. The, the original Google results, where they come from, it's not the normal Google stuff. It's coming from Google Maps. And mapping database is different than a search database, different than a database of all the websites out there.
This is something just important to keep in the back, in the back of your head as far as, as local goes. All right, so if we do the same search today uh, for Miami salons, here's what we're gonna see here. We're gonna see a Yelp listing, not, a, not an actual salon. We're going to actually see a salon here. This is a, a redmarketnyc.com and they have a location, they have one location at least one location in New York, and they have a location in Miami. So that really is a Miami salon. And this is a lure magazine, not a salon. They're talking about salon reviews and everything like that. But then you'll see the local results kick in. And these are the actual local results. Everything else like Yellow Pages, City Search, and all those other aggregators are pushed down <coughs> so, that, so that these small businesses have a chance of showing up. Making sense so far? All right. So. We talked about relevancy and authority. From the beginning, Google has looked at relevancy and authority. What do you guys think? They, in local, do they care about relevancy and authority? Or are they gonna throw that out and start from scratch? They're gonna find some way to use the same concepts. And here's what they say. They say there are three primary things when they're looking exclusively at what they refer to as Google Place Search, having a Google Place page, now it's called something different, but it's still called Google Place Search to them. Um, they're looking at relevance, they're looking at distance, and they're looking at prominence. Those are the three things that they say that they're specifically looking at uh, for, for local place results. Relevance is still the same idea. If you want a salon in Nashville, it's gotta have something to do with the salon in Nashville. Distance is, is, is just what it sounds like. If you're looking for a salon in Nashville, how far is it from Nashville? How far is it from the geographic center? of Nashville. The closer you are in that one category, the more brandy points you get, the, the greater score that you get. And prominence, here's what they actually say about prominence. Um, they say that some places are more prominent in the, in the offline world, and we try to reflect this online as well. And so they try to take into account, prominence is kind of like in everything else. They're looking for relevancy, they're looking for distance. Prominence roughly relates to authority. And so they're trying to understand those three things from Google's perspective. If you have a maximum score, combined score of those that's greater than any of your competition, you win. You should rank number one if you have the best combination of relevance, distance, and prominence. Now let's talk about in detail what goes into play here. So here are some of the things that I think you should uh, focus on for local SEO. Um, I'm going to talk in detail about a small number of these. Um, you should look at specifically at location. We're going to talk about that more. Um, your name of your business. Um, if you're Cherry O'Neill Photography, uh, you're going to be uh, doing better for a search for national photography than if your name is Cherry O'Neill Pictures. Does that make sense? Um, citations. We're going to talk more about citations in a minute. We're going to talk about your name, address, phone number, which is uh, the acronym is NAP. Um, on-site SEO, you still need to have the right words in the right places for local SEO. That is important. Um, links, I mentioned with the traditional search engine optimization, links from other websites help to grow your authority. That's still the case with local SEO, but they also take into account are those local links. A link from your uh, local chamber of commerce or your local business association or even from a local blogger um, is going to hold some relevancy as far as the the, the location-based aspect. Consumer reviews, we'll talk about that just a little bit more. And finally, the last thing that we'll talk about are going to be the search engine listings like claiming your profiles on Google and on being on Yahoo. We'll talk a little bit more about that. And that's actually going to be the primary topic of our next month's meeting. So here we go. We're looking for a national church. And I've removed all the other results, but I want you to take a look at the map. And I want you to think about what you're looking at on the map. This is a search that I did. I used, uh, I used the Chrome browser in incognito mode. Do you guys know that Google tries to personalize your results when you're searching for things? It tries to understand your physical location. It tries to take into account your connections with friends and, and other people that you communicate with either on Google Plus or on Gmail. Um, it also tries to take into account your browsing history. Um, in the Google Chrome browser, there is an option for incognito mode, which Google tells us removes all of that personalization for as much as possible. And so when I was doing these, I was looking in incognito mode to try to get an unbiased look at everything. Yes, sir? Is that the same as anonymous? 
Um, anonymous browsing. Yeah. Uh, Google's got a specific thing in the Chrome browser, but but essentially that's that's what you're trying to go after. Yes. And so here's what I want you to look at on the on the map. When I did National Church, Google gave me three primary results next to the map, and you can see this first one. How's it doing for location and proximity to the, it's called proximity to geographic central. How close are you to the middle of downtown? It's pretty good there, right? Because that's downtown. That's the center of downtown from a geographic standpoint right there. That might be the original church. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that, is, that is technically the geographic centroid of Nashville. It's right there, uh, right, around the, right around the courthouse and everything. You can see that A is very close, B is pretty close, and then C is a little, uh, just a little further out. All the other little dots, they represent other potential matches, but they didn't show up as well. And so think about how, how tight this map is, because Google's, Google's found what they believe to be enough results for the web search. If they didn't find enough results to show you what they felt was going to be uh, good results, then they would have widened the map so that they could show other things. Okay, here's another one. Nashville Realtor. Same, same focus on the map, or we've got a much broader area. You, do you see that? We're not looking at just downtown. Does anybody happen to know, uh, if I'm looking for National Realtor, um, this one actually stands out, the, the third listing seat. Does anybody happen to know what that might be? It's, it's the office of the National Realtor Association. Okay? And so part of the reason that Google expands the map is because this is a very prominent result. And so Google expands the map. Well, the nice thing about that, I believe, is that if they expand the map, it's easier for other things to show up. And so here's somebody out here, you know, this is a, this is a good 12 miles from the center of downtown Nashville. On that search for church, we wouldn't have seen anything like that because Google kept that map entire. Okay. And so they're, they're looking for that combination of location, prominence, and uh, location, prominence, and what was the other thing? Who was this? Distance. Distance. Yeah, I said location, but okay. Good job. You guys get it. Relevance. <laughs> Relevance. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Here's another one. This is even wider. I searched for RV repair in Brentwood, Tennessee. How many places can you get your RV repaired in Brentwood? Apparently, one is kind of close. And so Google expanded the map even to a larger degree to try to find some additional relevant results. Is this making sense? So you're, their distance, proximity to geographic centroid, how close you are to downtown or how close you are to whatever somebody searched for, is different for different searches. If you're searching for a chimney sweep, that might be, that might be a, a different distance that you're willing to, to look in as opposed to um, a pizza delivery place, right? If you're looking for a Honda dealership, you might have to go a little further than if you're looking to have a pizza delivered to your house. And, and they try to understand that and they try to take that into account. This comes into play on whether or not your listing is going to show up for people on Google local results. Uh, so this is an example of a structured citation. This is an example of an unstructured citation. This, uh, this website is battleofnationalcivilwar.org or something like that. Um, and they're talking about the downtown Presbyterian Church. And then they've just got text down here and they say the downtown Presbyterian Church is located at 154 Fifth Avenue North at the corner of Church Street in downtown Nashville. And so this is an example of a mention of a business. But again, to be a citation, Google has to be confident enough, yes, we're talking about the same place. Okay? And so if somebody just says at the downtown church on Fifth Avenue, that's probably not enough for Google to count it as a citation. The more citations you have, the better. And the more consistent they are, the better. Any of you guys know Manny's down at the arcade? A few of you know Manny's? If, if you were going there, would you say, hey, I'm going to Manny's? Or would you say, I'm going to House of Pizza? Or what would you say? Pizza Nazi. Pizza Nazi? <laughs> uh, well, here's on their website, and their web address is uh, manishouseofpizza.com. This is their home page, and they've got, if this was on another website, this would, this would count as a nice structured citation. You see that? And so their name, Manny's House of Pizza, 
their street address, 15 Arcade Building in Nashville, Tennessee, zip code, here's the phone number. That would be a very nice structured citation. So Google rewards quantity, quality, and consistency and velocity of, of citations. I want to talk about consistency of, of citations. And this is where we're talking about the NAP, the name, address, phone number. This is a big deal for local search. Because if the NAP all matches, the name matches, the address matches, and the phone number matches, Google says, yep, they're talking about the same place. If it's dramatically different, Google says, nope, two different places. But what if it's a little different? Google says, nah, I'm not sure if it's the same place. They try to primarily key on the phone number, but if, but if the name is different and the street address is, is the same and the phone number is the same, is it the same business? That's a good question. Did they change ownership and they renamed? Is it the same business or not if they've got a different name? That's the question that Google has. And if Google doesn't understand, you may not get credit for having as many citations. The more citations you have, the better you're going to rank. So here's what we see when we look at some of the citations for, uh, for Manny's House of Pizza. This is a structured citation at, uh, at Yahoo Local. And it's got Manny's House of Pizza. It's got the same phone number. It's got 15 arcade. I'm going to go back up. Nashville TN 37219. Is that exactly the same as what they listed on their homepage? No. What was different? Building. That's right. That's right. Good, good pick out. On here, they've listed 15 arcade. I'm going to back up. You see the street address? Yeah. Is it the same place? No. Not to be searching. Good question. Okay. Let's look at another citation. Here's the Yelp. Manny's House of Pizza, 15 Arcade Building, Nashville, Tennessee, and the phone number. That kind of perfectly matches what they've got on their homepage, what they consider themselves. I would say that Google can, with a high degree of confidence, say this is a structured, uh, this is a structured citation for this business we're talking about. I would say that Google probably says, yep, that's the same place. They're just calling the street a little different. And so I would say you're probably safe. But what would be better here is if this was 15 arcade building. Just make it easy. Make sure that Google understands it's the right citation. Here's another citation. House of Pizza. Same place? I'm going to say that I'd be concerned about Google understanding whether or not this is the same place. And here's, here's another version of the same thing. House of Pizza, 15 arcade. Nashville, Tennessee, and the same phone number. It, it appears as if there's a feed back and forth here between Yelp and these two websites. Um, in the world of local search, local data, there, there are a number of what we refer to as core data providers. Uh, there's, uh, there's Localese, there's InfoUSA, and Axiom uh, are the three primary uh, data providers. They basically collect all the information, and then tons and tons of companies buy their list. Like, like these guys, they buy a list from one of those three companies, or maybe all three of those companies, and then try to consolidate them. Google buys information from one or more of those companies to try to understand what businesses are out there. And so if you have inconsistencies in, um, in your business listings, usually what's best to do is to try to go direct to those core, uh, core data providers um, and try to update your information there. It is best if everything matches exactly. If there is an apostrophe, you should have an apostrophe. Um, if building is spelled out, it should be spelled out everywhere. If it's avenue and it's abbreviated to A-V-E dot, you should try to have it as consistent as possible. Yes, sir. I, I've seen whereas um, one competitor may have the address of another competitor in their list. You're right. You're right. That's great. And, and so one of one of the reasons why I'm having uh, why we're going to talk about Google Plus uh, for businesses specifically next time is because there are so many different issues that come into play when Google and other search engines are trying to consolidate all of this information. What you should do is you should try to understand is your business information, your NAP, your name, address, phone number, is it consistent 
for inconsistent. It is worth resources, it is worth spending resources on trying to get your business information as consistent as possible throughout the internet. If, if Ted's list of chimneysweeps.net has it wrong, don't worry about that. Because Ted doesn't have 10 people visiting his website. He's not an authority. But if, uh, but if yellowbook.com and whitepages.com and yp.com, they've got three different listings, you need to figure that out because that's confusing to Google and you're missing out on opportunity. You're not ranking as well as you want. Michael, um, quickly here, if, if a business, say, was located downtown Nashville, moved to a suburb of Nashville, mm -hmm. say Antioch, right. but was getting a lot of business from the, the local listing, right. would you suggest that they update their information and risk losing everything, or how do you, well, here's how do you gently maintain? Here, here's, here's the thing. The, the new address information is going to get into the ecosystem here, and it's going to start flowing in and through the data. And that means that you're going to end up having inconsistent name, address, phone number. Right. And so the answer, the answer is, if you're moving, you want to, as soon as possible, get everything to the new stuff. And if you've been ranking really well for, uh, for Nashville Pizza and you move to Brentwood, sorry, <laughs> you're, not, you're not in Nashville anymore. And you're not going to rank well for, for Nashville Pizza anymore because Google can find enough other places with the good combination of relevancy and authority, proximity, prominence um, that, that should rank well for national pizza. Okay. So next thing you really should spend some time doing is to encourage your customers to write reviews online for you. There are tons of places where consumers can write reviews for you. If you want to show up better in Google, and, you, and I believe that should be one of your priorities, the best place to have your customers write reviews that's going to be specifically on Google. Um, and here's an example of what reviews can do for you. I did a search for salons in San Jose. Um, this is an ad up here. These are ads down here. This is a traditional, uh, this is a traditional uh, uh, result, no, ranking number one. This is Yelp.com. And then we've got uh, three local listings below before I chopped off the bottom of the page. Um, you'll notice that reviews come into play a lot of different ways on this one search page on Google. In the ad up here, uh, limonsalon.com actually has five Google reviews. And look, they've got four and a half stars. That draws your attention to that ad up there. That's fantastic. And that's brilliant. Who would have thought that you could, you could say five stars and people understand that's reviews? The reason I bring that up is because you guys know that Google changed their review scoring deal. They instead of instead of having five stars, which everybody recognizes five stars, they went to out of thirty. That's just ridiculous to me. But that's the way they did. It. Um, they purchased a, a year or two ago. They purchased Zagat or Zagat uh, reviews, and that's how that company has always worked is on a thirty-point scale. And so Google has converted to, um, in the local results, they go to this 30-point scale, which I think is confusing. I won't be surprised if they change this back to five stars at some point in time. I hope they do. Um, you'll also notice that these three salons, they all have reviews, but only these two, only these two up top are actually showing their score. A 19 out of 30, eh. A 23 out of 30, that's pretty good. But we don't know out of 30 what this score is. I wonder why. Anybody got an idea where there's, why there's not a... They don't have 10 or more. They've only got two. Good, good point. Um, these two, we've got 11 reviews, we've got 12 reviews, we've only got two reviews here. Google feels that it looks like you need to have about 10 reviews on Google before Google will display this little part here. And it looks like you get a boost for your reviews when you get to about 10, and then there's some diminishing returns. More is more reviews. Quantity and quality and velocity. Let me explain those for a minute. Because uh, that comes into play in a lot of things in, in local search engine optimization. Quantity. The more you've gotten, the better. That's easy to understand. Quality. Five-star review or, or a 30-point review is better than a zero-star or a zero-point review. Pretty easy to understand. So that's quality and quant uh, quantity and quality. Velocity. If I filed taxes for the last 10 years and I've had 
uh, zero deductions, zero deductions, zero deductions, 150 deductions, zero deductions, zero deductions. What's the IRS going to say about that one year with a whole bunch of deductions? Red flag, right? <laughs> right. Same thing with Google. If you have gotten no reviews, no reviews, no reviews, 100 reviews, no reviews, no reviews, no reviews, Google's going to say, that's interesting. We should look more closely at that. And they will probably they will probably find that you have been manipulating their systems, at least from their perspective. Alan? Uh, I started a campaign. I sent all my old customers, like 350 people, okay. uh, saying that you know we're going to just give away one iPad. Just okay. give us a feedback. Okay. And we, right. And I started having feedback and reviews on yes. Google. Is it the same thing that for the moment we we'll consider this, you know, I, I never had a feedback before, mm -hmm. and maybe in one week I'll have 10, 15 feedbacks. That's, we'll that's, ex consider. that's exactly the type of reviews that you want to get. However, however, Google explicitly says you cannot run a contest you cannot give away anything to encourage somebody to leave a review, even if you don't say, we're giving, a, we're giving away an iPad for positive reviews. No. The, the, Google guidelines, the Google guidelines state, you cannot give any incentive to customers to leave a review for no, you. My email clearly says you're going to be in the drawing regardless you're leaving feedback or not. Right. And, and, really states that. and what I'm telling you is that's against the Google guidelines. Still. Yes, sorry. <laughs> I don't make the rules. I don't make the rules. I, I, and and it's, it's funny because not long after Google came out with that guideline, um, somebody pointed out um, Google had actually been running some contests in different cities encouraging people to leave Google reviews. <laughs> but, but just so you understand, just so you understand, Google is very clear in their guidelines that you are not to, you are not to encourage People, it's fine to say, will you please leave a review for me? I really could use a review from you. Here, I'll make it easy for you. You know, I'll send you an email with a link. You click on that link and you go leave a review for me. That is perfectly fine to encourage people to leave a review for. Print up, print up a card. Put a uh, uh, put a QR code on the back. They can scan that with their phone. It takes them directly to uh, directly to where they can leave a review for you on Google. That's perfectly fine. What is not fine is when you give some incentive. It is not, from Google's perspective, it is not fine for you to say, and we're going to give away something for leaving a review, or we're going to have a drawing of all the people that do reviews. How are they going to figure that out? I don't know. Google's pretty smart, but that's what the guideline is. Yes, ma'am? Are they leaving a review on Google Plus? And do they have to have a Google Plus account in order to do that? Um, like your client. Yes, the, the clients have to have a Google account. Oh gosh, uh, somebody help me out because I'm feeling like just within the last week or two I saw something that, uh, that there, were, there were some traces in the wild of Google allowing anonymous reviews again. But uh, nobody's helping me out here, so I'm going I'm to stick with what it has been for the past year or two. You have to be a logged in user on Google. You have to have a Google account, YouTube account, Gmail account. Google AdWords, Google Analytics, you have to have a Google account to leave a review. Back in the day, you could leave anonymous reviews on Google Place pages. For the last year or so, um, it has been the opposite. You have to have your real name is going to display. And that is going to discourage some people from leaving a review. If I'm a divorce attorney, you may not feel comfortable. I'm a proctologist. Would you leave a review for me? <laughs> um, and, but what they're trying to do, what they're trying to do is they're trying to, they're trying to cut down on the fake reviews, and they're doing a number of things. But that's kind of that's kind of the primary thing that they're aiming at by requiring people to log in with their real name to leave a review on Google. Yes, ma'am. Say the two Google reviews that are showing up on that last location. Will those reviews show up on Google Plus page? Yes. Okay. Yes, they should. Now, that kind of leads us into. Into lead, leads us into the search engine listings. Um, here's the takeaway that I want you to I want you to get from the search engine listing. You can you can list your business, and it's probably already listed on Bing, 
and on Yahoo, you need to go, you need to go claim, verify, and expand upon the details there. Google also probably, if you've been in business for at least a little while, at least a few months, then Google probably has bought your business uh, NAP information from some list out there, and they've got a listing for you. You need to go and claim and verify it and expand upon your information. Here's the problem. Um, up until about a year ago, uh, Google was calling this Google Places. And then they converted to what's referred to as Google Plus Local for businesses. This has not gone well. It's a little buggy. <laughs> Google Places was never completely straight. It was getting better and better. But when they made the switch, the Google Plus Local stuff was as bad as Google Places ever was. And there is still a bunch of flux. And it wiped all of the information completely out. And, and, here's, and here's the good news. In April of last year, an official Google employee said, don't worry, we've got something coming soon for you. <laughs> and three or four days ago, I saw, I saw there was a Google employee at a local SEO event, and guess what he said? Don't worry, we've got something great coming for you to take care of all of that stuff. Haven't messed with this yet, or you're wondering what to do. Here is the guideline. Don't try to merge yet. They've been saying since August that they're going to come up with a more automated, more friendly way to merge these two things together. It's still not here, but as of just a few days ago, there was a new update, a new you know, Google employee said, we're working on it, it's coming soon. What is soon? I don't know. But here is the recommendation, not only from me, but a number of, of the experts in the world of local SEO, don't try to merge yet. I've not done it with mine. I wish I could. But it is, it is time to be, you gotta be patient, I'm sorry. There are a lot of other things that you can be doing uh, to, to help promote your local online visibility don't merge your your, uh, your old place page and your new Google local local plus business pages. Um, I'm going to finish up, uh, and, and and again, that's why we're having Peter coming in next month. We're going to spend uh, we're going to spend all night long talking about Google Plus and all the different things. So make sure that you bring in your questions and quiz him. Um, I'll be uh, I'll be here as well to to, to give my insight. But uh, uh, but but Peter's Peter's really the expert in Nashville on Google Plus. I want to end with this, and this is just one example of how strange local SEO, uh, name it, uh, NAP consistency, um, and, and all these different things, this is how strange it can work. Um, $20 to anybody that can tell me what should come up on a map search on that in the next five seconds. Busy. Like, don't have yeah, numbers. Do what? Google a lot of numbers. Actually, I think I was somebody, somebody 20 bucks. But here's the here's the point. Here's the point. That's a phone number, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. That's easy for us to understand. Google says we don't understand what that is. <laughs> That's right. That's right. But it's. Yeah, exactly. They ought to be smart enough to figure out that's a phone number because we all can figure out that's a, a phone number, but but they can't. Here's what it is. If you put it in standard format, that is the main phone number for Google. Which is dash. Right, right. This is the standard notation that you should be using on your website and in your citations. This dashes seem to work just fine. However, this is what I recommend to have the, the area code in parentheses, have a space, and then have a, uh, have a hyphen in the middle of your phone number. So on your website, it, put whatever you want on your business card or on, on your flyer, I'm fine with that. But on your website, list your phone number this way. Um, when, you are, when you are correcting your NAP information, your citation information at, at different listing sites, directory sites, or at those core data providers, list it with this format. This is actually something I just came across. Uh, Linda Bouquet with uh, Catalyst Marketing uh, pointed me to this uh, just, just recently as I was kind of prepping for, for this presentation. But this is, this is just one of, it's, it's an example of the many challenges that you have in local SEO. There are a lot of things that we know that we can do to help. 
at the same time, we know that especially Google is struggling with this. Maps and finding locations on maps, that's hard. How many of you guys thought that Apple Maps was a success? And Apple did Guess what? It's hard to do this right. And Google's got a lot more experience in, in the world of mapping and information retrieval than, than Apple has. It's no surprise that Apple fell on their face with, when they introduced maps.